today, we're gonna talk about something a little different. No, it's still shoes, but it's the first time that this brand of shoe has appeared on this channel. In fact, I cannot remember the last time I placed an order from this shoe company. Actually, no, I remember what shoe it was, Air Max Day. But since then, it's been all about the boost, baby. But of course, I had to get this shoe. I have to review it. I gotta try it on. I gotta let you know and let me know what's this shoe all about. As you can tell from the thumbnail and the title of this video, uh, it is the Nike Epic React Flyknit in the white and racer blue colorway. Once again, I have a 14 year old boy's size shoe, size nine, which is my size that I wear in Adidas Ultra Boosts, Pier Boosts, etc. And in the Air Force One, I wear a nine, in the Air Max, a nine. I wear a nine, I'm pretty much a consistent nine. Seriously, it's been a long time since I've ordered the swoosh. This is gonna be a different kind of video, much like my Boost You Wear video. First, let's talk about the shoe right out of the box. Here we go, oh my lord. Yeah, all the videos that say the shoe is light, this shoe is light. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Let's just take a few to look at the shoe. All right, first impressions. I know I make fun of the word a lot, but this is a clean shoe. I'm all about all white shoes. I love it. Again, don't care about the dirt, don't care about the haters, don't care about anything. I have way too many all white shoes, but I don't have the Nike all white React Epic shoe. As you've seen in other reviews, this is Nike's newest reaction to the Boost. Oh, React, makes sense now. Let's just start on the bottom, the outsole. It's got this nice, clear, rubbery, translucent, it means clear, so that's redundant, over the toe box and the heel area, but on the arch and middle portion, it's all, I gotta learn not to say boost, it's all React, baby. This carries up the React to the midsole, which you are familiar with if you're familiar with boost in any way, shape, or form. Goes all the way back, comes all the way to the front, there you go. We have this royal blue, which has some sparkle kind of built into it. If you see it up close, let's see if you can see it. I don't know if you can. But it says Nike React on it, and that goes all the way around the heel. There we go. We have a plastic E heel cup-ish area that goes around. And then if you can see it, depending on how the light is, it says Nike on the medial or inside of the heel cup on the shoe. On the back, we have our pull tab that does say Epic React. And this nice silver sparkly 3M type oval. Guess it's so people see when I'm running. Again, I don't run. This whole upper is Flyknit. It's one piece Flyknit. If you like Flyknit, good for you. If you don't, I like Flyknit, but I'm more partial to Primeknit. Primeknit is just a little thicker and I appreciate that thickness and I like it. So I'm interested to see if my opinion will change with this shoe. It's all Flyknit all over, except for where the eye holes are. This is a nice thicker polyurethane material. Same thing right here. Maybe hard to see, but it does say Flyknit on this portion of the eye hole area. Eyelets? Eyelets. Can you see it? It says Flyknit right there. It's hard to tell. I hope you can. I'll just, I'm just gonna move this around and hope that you see it. Flat white laces, kind of thin with white aglets. And then the tongue, since it's a one piece upper, is connected to the entire shoe. Let's look at the other shoe and take a moment to see just how this shoe smells. That takes me back. Oh my God. <sighs> Shout out to StockX. They didn't give me this. I paid for it. This isn't an ad. I just gotta be real with you. Oh, wow. Okay. They say that smell is the thing connected to memories the most, something like that, probably apocryphal, not sure. But you smell something and it takes you back to another time. This takes me back to my childhood. Oh my. Like you walk into a shoe store, Academy, Foot Locker, whatever shoe store at the time sold shoes when you were younger. Oh, and you put on the, this, wow. I'm, I'm getting nostalgic about a smell of glue and chemicals on a shoe. If the boost is the smell of today for me, this is the smell of yesterday. Oh God, that's great. It's the same shoe. And guess what it comes with? Paper 
cardboard shoe trees. Now this shoe retails for $150 and I paid about $190 for these shoes. So more than retail, but was pretty much the same price as a brand new pair of Ultra Boosts. These are supposed to release February 22nd, I believe. This is a good looking shoe. I like this shoe, it's super light, very light. I don't know if this is supposed to be a running shoe or not. I don't run. Maybe I'll lightly jog just for the purposes of this video. See what I do for you guys? I totally dig the icy blue under, under sole, though I am very worried about how dirty these soles are gonna get and how much wear and tear these shoes are gonna get. If you're really interested in a video about specifically the wear and tear, go visit Hess Kicks. He just did a review about these in a different colorway that he wore to Disney. He does a really good breakdown of those shoes. It has a removable insole which has the Nike swoosh on it, has a tag as you can see, size nine, US. On the back, it's just blue, swooshy. And then the inside is just white, just a white insole area without the insole. So the first question, how does the React feel? It's squishy, not boost squishy. When there's less boost, when there's less React in the front, it's squishy, but this is, this is legit right here, this is some, some tough to react, doesn't really react much. On the bottom, it does have some nice oomph, some nice give, so that's encouraging. It's easier to feel the react on the bottom than a boost because the boost has that continental outsole all over. This doesn't. Not sure how that's gonna go. As Hess said, if you're gonna wear this every day or do some legit stuff in it, it's gonna wear down pretty quickly based on the fact that there is no rubber outsole on this portion. But if you're like me and you have way too many shoes and you're gonna put them in rotation, it uh, may not matter. I'm going to wear them all day long, do my errands, go eat, clean up the house, do all kinds of stuff, and then I'll come back tonight and update the video and let you know how it went. So now what I'm gonna do, because this is such a new silhouette and new technology, I'm going to record myself putting on the shoes so you can get an instant reaction to the react. It's almost like they planned it. Let's try these shoes on. All right, first impressions. Number one, these don't feel as comfortable as Boost when you put them on. And when I say that, I mean the Ultra Boost, which is, to me and to many, the most comfortable shoe on the market. That's not to say this isn't a comfortable shoe, it's a comfortable shoe. But first impressions say a lot, it's not as comfortable as the Ultra Boost. Number two, it was quite a struggle to put on. Whether that means my socks are getting in the way or I just have weird feet or whatever, maybe that's just the way it is, especially in the heel area. The heel area is where it feels the tightest right now. But as for length, a nine fits just perfectly. So I say go true to size. As I mentioned earlier, the fly knit does feel a little thin. I'm not gonna say it feels cheap. It just feels thinner than what I'm used to and prefer with the Ultra Boost. Having said that, however, this shoe will breathe much better, I think, than an Ultra Boost. Hess says you can wear them without socks. I'm not really about that. Something about cleanliness and onions and whatever. I feel like this shoe will breathe really well, especially in the spring and summertime in a hot state such as Texas. And again, this shoe is super light. Lifts feet, really light. A light shoe is good if you're gonna run, right? I don't, again, not gonna run. Maybe run after my baby and my dog. That's about it. Training a little bit. Let's go and test these out in the water. Now it's time to go take on the day and see just how these shoes feel, how they react, and what I ultimately think about them by the end of the day. I know what you're wondering now. How does the shoe drive? Shout out to Brad Hall. Drives like a regular shoe. It feels great, no slippage. Traction was good on the pedals, pretty comfortable. So for all you people out there wondering, will this shoe drive? Yes, this shoe will drive. So after wearing these Nike Epic React shoes for over a day and a half, let's talk about how they held up. For those of you that have white shoes, you know that the minute you wear them outside, they're instantly gonna get dirty. And these shoes 
were no different. Add to the fact that it's been raining the last day and a half and well, it was a recipe for dirt. I'm actually shocked that the shoes didn't get even dirtier. I wore these shoes for 12 hours straight yesterday and continue to wear them for about four hours today. I drove in them, I walked my dog in them, and I did tons of things inside the house on carpet, on tile, and even walked around outside on grass and gravel. If we look at the outsole on the left shoe, it isn't terribly dirty. There are some stains, as you can see, yellow marks. You will see that there are some stains here that managed to get their way underneath the transparent rubber outsole. Probably due to the perforations in the outsole, water and dirt and mud just kind of got under there, not so much in the back of the shoe. And you can see, as Hess pointed out in his videos, that the two areas where the shoe tends to wear down the most are this back part near the medial side and this front part near the lateral side. I didn't even wear these shoes that much and they already got wore down in that area. I can only imagine how much it would wear down if I actually ran in them, did exercise, or wore them pretty extensively. The right shoe tended to get worn down a little bit more. You can see right here, again on the medial side in the back, wearing down here on the treads, and same thing in the front on the lateral side of the shoe. The front of this shoe didn't get too much dirt underneath the rubber outsole, and same on the back here, though there are some issues in the back of these right here. Obviously, I'm no expert on these shoes or on how these shoes will hold up. If after a day and a half, the tread on the outsole of these shoes has already start to wear down, I think that's definitely concerning, especially if you want to wear these shoes for more than just lifestyle period. Again, as mentioned earlier, and as Hess mentioned, if you're gonna put these shoes in a rotation and you're not gonna wear them that often, that should be okay. But if this is supposed to be a running shoe or a daily shoe, I'm a little apprehensive about how long this tread would last. So what are my final thoughts on the shoe? Yes, I did get a haircut. Thanks for noticing, I appreciate that. It's a nice shoe. There's nothing really wrong with it. I didn't wear the shoe long enough to see if the React foam cushioning would wrinkle, which it will. You can already see that it starts to wrinkle a little bit. Same thing with their Zoom Fly 4% and whatnot. So I imagine that over time this is gonna wrinkle, probably just like the blocks on the NMDs. I don't find this shoe particularly exciting or innovative or crazy. Not really sure this shoe's getting the reaction they would hope for from me. I should have just waited till tomorrow to pay $150 and get it at retail. But I wanted to get the video out for you guys that were considering whether or not to purchase this. One thing I did notice today, because of the thick perforated holes in the fly knit upper, you will see semblances of your socks. So if you're wearing colors, colors will shine through. So if you're wearing white or going sockless, good for you. At the end of the day, Ultra Boost, you're still number one for comfort. Boost you wear, number two in my book, and number three, the Yeezys. Like those three are the most comfortable shoes. I guess this would be number four. I don't know. I have some very comfortable Adidas. I guess if it's all Boost, Boost is number one, and would this be number two? I don't know. As I mentioned, I very much love the comfort that's provided underneath the balls of my feet, but I don't know that I would prefer this more than an Air Force One. But then you wouldn't run in an Air Force One. Air Force One's more lifestyle for me. So I don't know. I'm really torn. It's a nice looking shoe. I like the silhouette and I think it's pretty clean. It's fun, it's cool, it's okay, it's nice. It's got a nice personality. And for a bit, I was contemplating purchasing the triple black version of this Nike Epic React, but I don't know. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna add this shoe to Mont Schumore. This is gonna go on my beater shelf, which is in the hallway right inside of the front door. I will wear these shoes. In fact, these shoes will get more action from me than any of my other shoes just because I rotate. But if I'm gonna take the trash out, check the mail, run some errands, I'll probably just wear this shoe. If that's what Nike wants, cool, awesome. I'm not gonna try to flex with these shoes. I'm not gonna floss with them. I'm not gonna, what other buzzwords are there? Pimp my feet. If you want a solid shoe, you want something different than Adidas, you want something cheaper, you want something comfortable, go for it. Get this shoe, it's nice, it's good. But I've been walking on Boost for a while. I know how that feels. My feet knows when it's in uh, that cushiony marshmallow cloud of je ne sais quoi. These aren't that though. So don't expect it to be that. You know what Nike, good job, good effort. You've been successfully added to my beaters collection. I am interested to see how this Nike Epic React compares to the Under Armour Hover, which I have coming shortly. So that's it. That's my epically long epic reaction video. Yeah, I'm sorry. It just writes itself. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan to purchase these shoes. 
If you have, what do you think? Am I totally off base and wrong? Or is the general consensus the same? I don't know, I'm anxious to see what sneakerheads, everyday shoe folk and runners think about this shoe because the opinion is probably gonna change depending on how you intend to use said shoe. If you like this video, like what I'm doing, leave a thumbs up, maybe even a thumbs up emoji. Skin color's up to you. And then maybe if you like what I'm doing on this channel and you wanna see more of this type of content, click that red subscribe button. Let me know for your prayer emoji. If you're curious about my other life, my professional life, my music writing life, visit my other channel, Daniel Montoya Jr. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill. Till the next episode.